Hey guys, it's Mrs. Salceda. I'm here to show you how to complete your physics unit test review materials. So the physics unit test will include a net force calculation. You need to understand the difference between balance and unbalanced forces. You definitely need to know the definition of force. You should be able to calculate speed. This one is extra important. And then of course you need to be able to interpret your motion graphs and this one is extra, extra important also. So it says review the attached slides, video, and study guide. Go to file, make a copy to edit your study guide. So there is a Google slide that goes over distance time graphs and how to interpret what the lines mean. So make sure you take some time and look this over before the test. This tells you what all of them mean. And then you stop here. You don't need to go past that. Once you're done with that, um, there's some speed practice on the video. So you can watch me explain how to calculate speed. So I go over quite a few speed problems in that video. There's your forces PowerPoint. This will explain to you what force is, how to calculate net force, the difference between balanced and unbalanced forces. Very important for you to know. And then lastly, we have the actual study guide. Now, if you want to use this study guide and edit it, you're going to have to go to File, make a copy, because yours is going to be View Only. So go to File, make a copy if you want to edit this. Now, um, before you take the unit test, you need to ask yourself, can you do these things? Can you calculate speed? Can you identify the distance and time on a graph? Can you explain an object's motion just by looking at a graph? Can you explain the difference between balance and unbalanced forces? Can you calculate net force? That's, that's what I want you to ask yourself and be honest with yourself. Because if there's one of those things that you cannot do, then that's what you need to focus on. Don't focus on the things you feel confident in. Focus on the things that you do not feel confident in. So if you still do not remember how to calculate net force, then make sure you spend some time looking over the forces notes. So um, the first thing I want to go over is calculating average speed. So this question says a runner races a 100 meter dash. It takes her 10 seconds to finish. What is her average speed? So, just a reminder, our formula, speed equals distance divided by time. So, we have our distance, that's 100 meters. And you have your time, that's the 10 seconds. To solve this problem, all you need to do is take your distance and divide it by your time. And that's it, and then you'll be done. The next question has to do with a graph. This graph has a question right underneath it. It says, what is the distance traveled in the first five seconds? So a reminder that time will always be on the x-axis down here at the bottom, horizontal going left to right. Our distance, our displacement, will be going up and down on the y-axis. Y to the sky, that's what I tell myself. Y to the sky, the y-axis goes up and down. X axis will stay on the bottom. Time will always be on the X. So it says, what is the distance traveled in the first five seconds? So we need to go to five seconds and then go up to where it meets the line. So we know the five seconds, but we want to know what's the distance. So now you're going to have to move your cursor to the left and then type down what's the distance they traveled. And don't just give me a number, make sure you use the unit. It tells you in parentheses the unit you should be using. Once you're done with that, we have a graph that has A, B, C, D, and E. Now I want you to explain the motion for line A, line B, line C, and line E. So you're going to type out 
what motion is happening at line A. So for line A, I want you to notice that the distance stays the same even though time keeps going on. So the line continues to go because time is, doesn't stop. But the distance isn't changing. So if the distance was changing, you'd see this line going up or going down. But line A is just a straight horizontal line. It's a flat line. So this means the object is not in motion. It's not moving. It's at rest. It's stationary. They all mean the same thing. Line A is stationary object. The object is not moving. Um, line B, this is a straight diagonal line. When we have a straight diagonal line, that means a constant speed. It's going the same distance in the same amount of time. So if I'm going at constant speed, I'd be driving 60 miles on the highway, the same speed the whole time. That, that would be constant. Constant does not change. Line C, you notice the line C is curving. So I want you to remember the saying, the steeper the slope, the faster the speed, right? So you'll notice that line C doesn't have a very steep slope at first. But as time goes on, you can see that the slope gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So the steeper the slope, the faster the speed. So what's happening here is that the speed is increasing. The object's getting faster. And lastly, E. I want you to notice that line E is not starting from zero. Line E and B are very similar. They're both constant speeds. But line E is not starting from zero. Line E is going down towards a distance of zero, which means he's returning to start. So when you see a negative slope going back towards zero, not zero on time, but zero for distance, then we can say that it's returning to start. The next question is um, define force, define balance and unbalanced forces. You have those definitions in your vocabulary in your digital notebook. So you can write those down from using your notebook. And then lastly, this is one about net force. A box is being pushed 50 newtons to the left and 30 newtons to the right. What is the net force of this object? So when you do a net force, you're going to give me a number and then the unit newtons. And then you need to tell me left or right. Okay, You need to give me a direction. So one or the other. You're either going to tell me 100 newtons left or 100 newtons right. But you need to have the number, the unit, and the direction. So this one says that there's 50 newtons pushing a box to the left and 30 newtons pushing the box to the right. So I always say that opposites subtract. So you want to ask yourself this question. Are the arrows going in the same direction or opposite directions? Is the force working in the same directions or is the force is working in opposite directions? If the forces are working in opposite directions, um, the net force is a subtraction problem. But if the forces are working together, then it would be an addition problem. But this says 50n to the left and 30n to the right. So those are opposite directions, so we're going to subtract. We're going to take 50n and subtract 30n, and that will give you the net force. But don't forget your newtons and your directions. Which way is it going to move? Will it move left or right? Whichever force is bigger, that's the direction the object will move. So what's bigger, 50n to the left or 30n to the right? That's how you're going to decide what direction to put down with your answer. So take 50n, subtract your 30n, that will give you your net force, and then tell me which direction the object is going to move, to the left or to the right. If you need any more help, then you can comment on the assignment or you can email me.